Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to our viewers from all over the world. I am Assistant Secretary Eduardo Armenez, and I welcome you to our program, In Focus, Mindanao Art, featuring Balay Kalipay. 
This October couldn't be more significant as we celebrate both the Museum and Galleries Month, the National Indigenous Peoples Month, as well as the designation this 2021 as the year of the Filipino pre-colonial ancestors. As a way to celebrate in this celebration, uh, the DFA through the Office of Public and Cultural Diplomacy partnered with Manila Art Foundation Incorporated and Balay Kalipay to promote a virtual tour of Balay Kalipay Museum and Art Gallery. Before we begin further and formally open this discussion on Mindanao art and the virtual tour of Balay Kalipay Museum and Art Gallery, let us hear from our partner organization, Manila Art Foundation Incorporated. Our introductory speaker is Manila Arts Curator and Head of National Committee on Art Galleries for the National Commission for Culture and the Arts, Mr. Danny Rayos Del Sol. Well, thank you, Asik Menes. Menes, good afternoon to everyone, members of the Department of Foreign Affairs and all the distinguished guests from around the world. We're greatly honored to be part of the celebration of Museums and Galleries Month, spearheaded by our DFA. As National Arts Fair on our 13th year, we are very energetically promoting the different arts and cultural venues and sites in the country. With online access necessitated by our current world situation, we welcome the opportunity to expand our audience to a global stage through virtual showcases. Now with this initiative of DFA shared to Philippine Post around the world, we are encouraged to compile library of online shows that will allow audience on demand to visit many beautiful and worthwhile artistic cultural venue throughout the country. Balay Kalipay is one of the shining example of such venue. And we hope to give you a teaser today of one can see by a 360 walk through, which is being made available to you by this project. Today's panel will also give proper context towards not just viewing, but also understanding on the situation and concern of our Mindanaoan artist whose works is being showcased. We hope this is only the beginning and we look forward for more collaboration between DFA and Manila Art. Thank you once again and enjoy the afternoon. Thank you again. Mr. Danny Rios del Sol for the assistance and support from Manila Art Foundation Incorporated. Let's now take a quick look at the newest hotspot for artistry in the beautiful mountains of Malagos in Davao del Sur. Balay Kalipay is envisioned to be the home to indigenous and modern Mindanaoan art. And today's panelists are the movers of Mindanao Art Fair and also the creative force behind this landmark visual arts venue. Here is a visual introduction to Balay Kalipay. Welcome to Balay Kalipay or House of Joy. Here we seek to bring out the joy that only a deep connection with nature and art can bring. In this giant word Kalipay, you would see three huge heads of sculptures depicting the tribe people of Mindanao. You would see a Muslim, an indigenous person, and a Christian. But here, the eyes are hallowed, so we would encourage the visitors to go inside the head of the sculpture so they could see through the eyes of your neighbor. The main structure is a place for gathering, to encourage discussions and sharing with living spaces like bedrooms, kitchens, and dining area to take away distractions from the flow of ideas and inspirations. Balay Kalipay is the second of a trilogy of root, flower, and fruit, following nature's natural progression. So here, 
we show the flowering stage, the beauty of Mindanao art and artists. The main facade is a huge waling-waling interpreted by the artist. In the middle of each flower are sculptures of children carrying the symbols of the elements, the sun, the moon, the stars, the trees, and the earth. Da Right at the entrance hall, you are welcomed by Agi Pagkatipunan's 30-foot-long table. This is designed to share our wealth of knowledge and experience in art while breaking bread, having dinner, and sharing food. This is probably the longest table in Mindanao. Right beside it is the heaviest door ever, which opens to the piece of pie hall, the centerpiece in the 2019 Manila Art in SM Aura. Piece of pie is a thought form that is anchored on the hope and depicting how we can work hard to make sure that every Mindanaoan gets an equitable share of Mindanao's bounty. Here in this um, big durian canopy, uh, it's like when you dine here or when you, when you have breakfast here, you are like the fruit. This is where you, you get to acknowledge your yourself as being right and ready to share your talent to the world. Having had your breakfast, you are invited to look at the opposite side, the giant Philippine eagle canopy. It is meant for you to see the world from the eyes of an eagle, seeing beyond, changing perspectives higher, wider, and wiser. The dining area features a collaborative mural that symbolizes a waterfall dining with thoughts and prayers that all tables will be filled with food. Here is my recent work that I installed it in, in Balay Kalipay, the passion and compassion. In the word passion, you would see the image of the mind, but it's not enough. So I added the word compassion. It has the image of the heart. Uh, with both combined, we can now fully share our gift. The newest installation is Adapai, a fireplace for visitors to gather at night for fellowship. Surrounding it are huge fire-inspired sculptures I titled Kalayu, or fire, expressing out fueled passion within to come out. The Haring Aguila Amphitheater features cubist sculptures of women. The biggest set are called sky dancers, as they dance to mimic eagles. At the stage will soon be the Happy Christ Chapel. Its facade designed to host performances in warm and loving gratitude to the greatest artist of all, our God and Creator. The other structure that is under construction now is the proposed Museum of Modern Art in Mindanao. This is envisioned to house Mindanao's long history alongside its myths, stories, legends, and music starting from the Ice Age, if possible. Through gathering all this in one place, we allow visitors and Mindanaoans alike to get a fuller grasp of who we are as a people and make art as a wonderful experiential vehicle in digging our collective core. A visitor then brings home with him a clearer idea on how we can move forward to a better future. I am Kublai Milian, and I thank you for joining me in this journey. That was just a brief and intriguing overview of Balay Kalipay the vision behind it, and a look at some of the magnificent art that you can experience later. I'm sure many of you are excited for our virtual tour of Balay Kalipay, which by the way, uh, you can immerse yourself fully if you have this uh, VR headset <laughs> I'm trying to show. Um, 
and uh, what we will be showing you a little bit later is a also a short intro to the virtual uh, experience. And we will be also sharing a link where you will be able to um, do this uh, 360 degree um, tour at your own leisure. Now, as we proceed to the second part of our program, we are fortunate to have with us five experts who will share with us their knowledge in art and the narratives of the Mindanao region. First, we will have Ms. Stella Estramera, an award-winning journalist based in Mindanao. Then we will have the, uh, the arts and design head teacher from Davao City National High School, Mr. Jeff Bangot. Third, uh, we will have a former professor from the Philippine Women's College of Davao and the local visual artist from Davao City, Mr. Dexter Taniedo. Then uh, our fourth speaker will be a local visual artist from Davao City, Ms. Tanya Gaisano Lee. And finally, a visual artist and the co-founder of Balai Kalipai, whom we just heard from, Mr. Kublai Milian. Each of our speakers will be given time to speak. And should you have any questions, please write them down uh, and the name of the speaker along with your question and put them in the comments section. Our community managers will collect the questions to be asked during the Q&A session after the fifth speaker is done. We will now proceed with our panel discussion. Our first speaker is the executive director and corporate secretary for Lawig Diwa Incorporated, the organizer of the annual Mindanao Art Fair, a contributor and, and columnist for Sunstar Davao, and its editor in chief for 15 years until 2018. She has written, edited, and published uh, several books. She is an award winning journalist recipient of 27 uh, awards, including a distinction from the International Labor Organization, Pagkilala sa mga natatanging kwentong katutubo. She has been honored with the title Bia Mogawai, Honored Leader for Advocacy by the Tribal Communities Association of the Philippines for her consistent coverage on indigenous cultural communities and their concerns. To start our panel discussion this afternoon, let's all welcome Ms. Stella Estramera. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning to all. Thank you for that introduction. I'm here to set the thread for the speakers after me for better appreciation and understanding of Mindanao art. But there seems to be a lot to digest. There is Manila Art Fair introducing Balay Kalipay or House of Joy as its satellite exhibit, which is also part of Mindanao Art Fair that is ongoing in Davao City until October 31, 2021. And then there is Mindanao Art as differentiated from the art fair. Let's line them up and define them as they are. Number one, Manila Art is the inspiration. Number two, Mindanao Art Fair is the vehicle. And number three, Balay Kalipay is a haven for work, meditation, and continuous learning that is geared toward number four, Mindanao Art, the vision. Before we experience Manila art, we have tried everything to fan interest in art and build a visual art industry in Davao. We didn't succeed. We started focusing our efforts to give birth to a vis thriving visual art industry through numerous group exhibits, an art exchange, even an attempt at an art residency from year 2012 to 2018. We inspired artists, but failed in creating an industry. Visual arts in Mindanao remained in the doldrums, each group running their own show, 
each failing to create a sustainable and sustained market, majority denied access to art collectors and patrons. It was in 2018 when NCCA and Manila Arts' Danny Reyes del Sol introduced us to Manila Art and we saw vast possibilities by going big. Danny shared his experience with Manila Art and showed us how to access a grant from the National Commission on Culture and the Arts to gather artists from all over Mindanao. What we lacked in profitability, we made up in impact from 10 art groups with less than 100 artists in 2019 to 35 art groups this year with more than 300 artists. The vehicle has revved up and re remained focused on the vision of what we want. The vision is a visual art community that is rooted. Art that is confident with its identity. Art that is a collective undertaking serving as markers of time and periods and the island's holistic beliefs. Art that is from the people engraving the unique cultures throbbing within Mindanao. As Kublai Milian, the president of Lawi Diwa Incorporated, the organizer of Mindanao Art Fair said, we can never get there until we all get there. It is because the vision is a Mindanao art, an art expression that is anchored on who we are as Mindanaoans. Mindanao has 18 indigenous ethnolinguistic groups and 13 Islamized ethnolinguistic groups with distinct attires, culture, and practices. We still have a living art in Mindanao. We still have that opportunity to grow with and among our people, our environment, are deeply rooted multifaceted cultures and emerge as an art community that is uniquely Mindanao. We have the music that is uniquely Mindanao, the dances, the people, the crafts, and indigenous knowledge, the colors, the forest, the forest creatures. Many of our children can still recognize the forest sounds imitated by a kubing or a jo harp. They can still recognize the banog or the bramini kite with every flip of the hands and turn of a dancer from an indigenous community. They can still see forests and waterfalls and listen to the crickets. They can still touch the earth that produces life. In the same way, artists can still imbibe inspirations from unpolluted sceneries. They can still breathe in air that refreshes the mind, even watch a tree grow. Mindanao artists can still create from their heart and the wholeness of their being and not from some broken mindsets laid to waste by a polluted land and the bitterness of having to fight for every little piece of bread. Mindanao artists can still be influenced to meditate on the good and render in colors unique to their environment and not just produce improved adaptations of foreign narratives. By creating from an environment that still breathes unique identities, Mindanao art can then be that beacon to bring about what is unmistakably Philippine art. Through this vision of Mindanao art, we can become better than all that has already been organized, much, much better than the inspiration. From all these efforts already initiated, we are here to speak of rootedness and its importance to our being and becoming Filipinos, confident of and in our identity. Through art, we become better Filipinos as we reach out to the global audience, delivering a narrative that is from our collective soul as Mindanaoans. 
In between art fairs, we incubate our ideas and hone our skills at Balay Kalipay in Malagos, Davao City, our haven for work, meditation, and continuous learning geared toward Mindanao art, the vision. That said, I thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Estramera, for that uh, very interesting overview of the journey that uh, all the uh, stakeholders in Mindanao have been undergoing the past few years. Our second panelist is an arts and design coordinator and visual arts teacher at the Davao City National High School. He is a graduate of Bachelor of Science in Secondary Education, major in Social Studies, at Holy Cross of Davao College and Bachelor of Fine Arts major in painting at Philippine Women's College of Davao. A practicing artist and art educator for several years now, he now serves as the head curator of the ongoing Mindanao Art 2021. To talk about art education, please help me welcome Mr. Jeff Bangot. Hi, good day everyone. I am Jefferson Jeff Pangot. I am an art educator uh, of Davao City National High School um, Arts and Design Program. So today I will be presenting to you what Mindanao and in particular Davao Region is doing to improve uh, art education and appreciation of this part of the country. At the same time, uh, to share our effort uh, to create a better art community and art industry. We piloted a program in the biggest school in uh, Davao City or in Davao, in Davao Region, the Davao City National High School, uh, where I serve as arts and design coordinator and uh, visual arts teacher. Uh, in the school, we train students uh, a strong foundation in the art of painting, uh, sculpting, uh, and other related skills uh, in visual arts. We challenge students to push boundaries and produce relevant works of art that uh, that are not only pleasing, but uh, at the same time moving. And we collaborate with the right individual uh, to achieve great output like what we did in our school fence. So this is a project called Love for Peace, wherein we collaborated with uh, our mentor, Kablai Milian, a district artist, uh, Artie Oplos, and wife, Alilea. Um, uh, Tele Stremira, Tabor Artist Groups, and School Based Arts Organization uh, in the city, the City Government of Davao, uh, DepEd, Davao City, and the Reno Shine Last America Paints. So these are some of the highlights uh, in this mural. So, as of now, it has been three years since its creation. So, we are planning to restore it at the end of this year or maybe at the beginning of uh, 2022. This is said to be the longest mural. Uh, in the city and maybe in the one of the longest continuing rural in the country. We achieved this through a collaborative effort and of course the involvement of our students. School where I am teaching, we uh, always challenge students to join, encourage students to participate uh, different exhibitions. So uh, actually we are a regular exhibitor of uh, SM organized exhibitions uh, uh, the art for everyone. So this is usually annual, done annually before the pandemic. We are also one of the pioneer exhibitors in um, Mindanao Art, starting from its foundation in 2019. During that year, um, we created a collaborative mural entitled Binabing Mga Kita. So it's a big mural around 8 by 32 feet long. Pandemic did not stop us from participating in Mindanao Art 2020. So as we all know, during that time, that's the height of the pandemic. So as we push uh, boundaries, you know, despite difficulties of the absence of face-to-face -face classes, so we still managed to come up with a collaborative mural, mural entitled Great Moves. What we did in this piece is we asked students to create uh, doodles at home to express their anxiety during the that difficult times. Then 
we ask them to submit those uh, doodles. Uh, and then my co-teacher and I pasted those doodles in the 4 by 16 panels and added some elements to finish the piece. So luckily it was sold for a good price then making us uh, purchase additional equipment for our online classes. In this picture, you can see our exhibition uh, entry during uh, Mindanao Art 2020. Uh, also shown in the picture is our principal, Ma'am Evelyn Magno, uh, standing proud besides our artworks. At present, uh, this is our entry for Mindanao Art 2021. Um, again, a collaborative new run. Uh, between my students in grade 12 arts and design liberal arts and my co-teacher uh, in SPA. Art program like uh, what we have uh, would never be possible uh, without the support of our stakeholders. So we are thankful uh, to the Department of Education, our the management of the school in Davao City High, and of course the Lawik Diwa organization headed by our friend and mentor Tublay Milian and the Mindanao art in particular also. Stakeholders made our dreams uh, of having a school managed art gallery uh, uh, into life. So it was in 2019, the Lawig Diwa uh, helped us in establishing Gato Bago Gallery Cafe. It is an art themed cafe. Uh, it serves as senior high school laboratory for arts and design at the TVL uh, and Accountancy, Business and Management strand in, in Senior High in Davao City National High School. Even in the process of making the Gallery Cafe, uh, we try to involve our students you know, showcasing their skills in sculpting uh, and also skills in painting and design skills. So turning pieces of scrap like that into this wonderful upcycle dining set, uh, this basically made of uh, broken armchairs. This is the cafe. This is the in the first ground floor, and this is the gallery uh, situated in the second floor of the building. One of the and this is the, the one of the stu uh, students' uh, exhibitions. Uh, this was the first exhibition in the gallery. Another program that we are doing is the Lunang Mentoring Program. Uh, Lunang means mud bath. It is uh, designed for young and upcoming artists. In this picture, uh, it's the first batch of our uh, Lunang mentee from Tagum City. In this mentoring program, we did a series of in-depth talks and workshops for in, uh, at least around like three to five days in Balay Kalipay, uh, transforming the hearts and the minds and of course the hands of these young artists to create art. To quote from Kublai's words uh, about this program, he said, uh, this mentoring program is where artists are deep in mud to find their deep connections with the earth and grow uh, to the full essence of rootedness. So we emphasize the word rootedness here in the program. So thus we aspire the graduates of this program, of this uh, mentoring program, to possess enough, not only to possess enough uh, skills to thrive as an artist, but also to acknowledge their roots as Mindanao. Aside from the Lunang program, we also have these laboratories. So we have two art laboratories uh, for our mentees. So we have the Kasing Art Lab and we have the Gallery Down South. So Gallery Down South and Kasing Art Lab serves as the laboratories for our mentees. The two laboratories are designed to put into practice the different theories and methods learned by our mentees during the, their stay in the mentoring program. So they are this group of young artists are usually grouped into by two, by twos or more, and then even challenge to produce uh, exhibitions. And in the process, we help uh, these artists sell the works online through our galleries, uh, Facebook pages, 
and we do have physical exhibitions in the galleries, uh, basically by appointed basis uh, because of the pandemic. So by doing this initiative, we help young and upcoming artists to showcase their works and slowly create a name for themselves in the art community. Like a real gallery, we also participate in different art exhibitions and art fairs like in the now art. So this is an avenue for the students to really showcase the, their uh, skills. So the graduate of the two uh, art laboratories could book a solo show in uh, Abung Bughao Gallery. So this is a gallery in partnership with Blue Gray Cafe Coffee in Matina Town Square in Davao City. So it's just a small space, uh, but enough to put up an elegant art show. Uh, it is designed for artists wanting to present his or her first solo show or exhibition. Since it is also situated in a public place, uh, it is highly accessible to viewers who wanted to see their exhibits. We also have online presence and we also sell their works online. We have this uh, Facebook page also created for this uh, particular gallery. That's it. We are creating actually a template ready to be shared to any city in the country, and in particular in Mindanao, from basic to advanced art education and uh, exploration uh, to their first solo exhibition. We, we, we actually provide an avenue to any artist who would like to grow and learn uh, with us, uh, starting from Davao City National High School, Datuwago Gallery Cafe, to our Lunang Mentoring Program, Alipay, then to the two art that we have, the Gallery Down South and Kasing Art Lab, and finally to Abong Bungao Gallery. So this endeavor is in line with our goal to develop a better art community and create a stable creative industry in this region as part of the country. That's all I can share to you. Uh, thank you very much uh, to, and more power to the organizer of this particular event. Thank you, Mr. Bangot, uh, for that very uh, enlightening uh, discussion and the presentation on an essential and exciting uh, process of uh, educating our future culture bearers. Um, the examples you showed, and uh, of course, the entire explanation really uh, uh, explains uh, how rich um, the art scene is uh, in uh, that part of our country. And uh, from the examples that you showed, we can really see that uh, your young artists uh, have a very vibrant understanding of uh, culture. And I'm pretty sure that um, because of uh, efforts like this, uh, by sharing all this information, we will be able to sustain your efforts. Next, we will learn more about the local art scene in Mindanao. And our next speaker is a local visual artist from Davao City. Um, he is a well, uh, he is also an art writer and art educator and a former program chair for the painting and visual communication of the fine arts department of the Philippine Women's College. He is an art teacher and instructor of 20 years. He holds the deputy director position for the Asian Artists Alliance in Huizhou, China and is also a consultant of the Department of Education Central Office, where he also served as a national trainer, curric curriculum writer, and resource person. He has done numerous group shows and solo exhibitions. He studied sculpture at the Academia del Gigilo in Florence, Italy, and is currently handling La Herencia Davao Art and Events Pavilion while establishing the Art Resource Center Library and Gallery, a community art library and an experimental art gallery. Everyone, please welcome Mr. Dexter Tanyedo. For that kind introduction, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. It will be an honor to present to you the Mindanao Art Landscape through our art groups, 
galleries, and art spaces. The Davao art scene has always been a mix of the three pillars of art styles, the representational, the avant-garde, and the indigenously inspired art. Just like the eternal Thai image of Davao City, where the Lumad, the Christians, and Muslim converge to live in harmony and peace while practicing one's own culture and religion. This may be very well be true with the different art scenes of Mindanao. The visual arts of Mindanao also have that Thai image vibe. In terms of affinity to the art market and identity, representational art and indigenous art always have the greater leverage in art exhibition and community support for the longest time. But in the recent years, the appreciation and exhibition of avant-garde artworks have been steadily been increasing. In fact, it goes to new contemporary art forms that are not limited on the traditional canvas works, like installation art, performance art, street art, among others, with actual participants and interest from the unaccustomed community. This may be because of the growing Mindanao population of which has several migrants and foreigners that may have a different taste for the art and the return of Mindanao's own children from their studies or work from other places in the Philippines and abroad, thus having that more internationalism appreciation for the arts. Also, the much improved communication technology make it easy to access information to learn new things and social media becomes a common place to exchange ideas with other people, making it possible to not only to the young, but also the older generation to understand and to appreciate art without leaving their locality. This new understanding and appreciation also led thousands of emerging artists and art hobbies in Mindanao to come out as well as new art groups and creating a real art market that can support art supply shops, art in cafes and restaurants, and even new galleries. As an honest experience in Davao City, we only had our first specialized art shop in the mid-2000. And before that, it was the local bookstore and department stores where we get our limited art supplies. These are some of the Mindanao's visual art groups and coincidentally are part of the ongoing Mindanao Art Fair. They come in as an exhibitor or part of a gallery. In fact, some of our panelists here have affinities to these art groups. The oldest one actually is the Kalapati Art Group being set up as early as the 70s, honing and inspiring young artists of Davao City, while the Talandig Art Organization is known for their soil painting and also, they are a cultural community here in Mindanao. The Davao by Hinang Women Artists is a movement that aims to develop not only the artistry of female Dabawenya artists, but also her place and career in the arts, while the DS Foundation presents young artists that are differently able. Now, major exhibitions in Mindanao for the longest time have been events meant for malls and hotels, since art spaces dedicated to the arts are not yet established. Mall and hotels also have built-in customers and thus possible art buyers. To prove how malls are the major art exhibition spaces, in 2019, the Art Market, an art event made by the Philippine Women's College of Davao and the first Mindanao Art Fair were both done in local malls. Local museums do offer a space for exhibition, but it is still a challenge to pull in people to come, but at least museums give an opportunity for artists to exhibit and showcase their works. Newer museums offer multiple things, like the Tagum Historical and Cultural Center has multiple functions that can draw people in because of the many services and offerings that they can give from visual art to theater, a library and music room, among many others. Like museums, a brick and mortar gallery has a same function of showcasing artworks. They are more into business oriented while churning the passion of the artists while building them up for the market of art buyers. Most galleries in Mindanao survive for a long period of time because of the owners having other businesses to sustain their passion or has established a name. The creation of several galleries with actual physical spaces, even during this pandemic, proves that Mindanao artists are now entering the creative industry with determination. These galleries are not just display areas of artworks, but galleries that specializes in different forms of art and even types of artists. 
there is now growth and maturity in terms of creating a real role of galleries for the artists, the community, and the industry. This is also aligned with the creative hubs and art residencies that are now emerging in Mindanao that further strengthens, develops, and sustains the creative practice. Here are some of the many galleries of Mindanao that help establish artists or art groups. Most of these galleries are established and managed by artists themselves. That is why there is great sense of familiarity among artists and galleries. Gallery Rafael Dabao is the first national gallery to be established in Davao City, opening possible doors of opportunity for the Mindanaoan bred artists to a bigger market, while reflecting back to us some established and known artists with Mindanaoan roots, like for example, our national artist Abdul Mari Imau. The Jing Rabat Art Gallery is one of the galleries that was established even during the pandemic and the first of its kind in Mati City, proving the wealth of talent and creativity doesn't need to be away from one's own city. Best of Davao is a website dedicated to the arts, culture, and lifestyle of Davao and Mindanao that has now embarked on online exhibition. It is now also venturing to video blogs to further promote and showcase Mindanaoan talents. Actual art spaces like La Herencia Davao, Balay Kalipay, are now being established and hopefully creates a directed and diverse creative community that will lead on the much coveted creative industry that will sustain artists, artisans, designers, and all other creatives. The Mindanao Art Group is not a remote and detached to the world for available opportunities in the art. There are linkages and networks for arts like the Budayao, which was first established in General Santa City in 2017, which showcased Mindanaoan artists to a more international crowd. We also have the British Council projects that directly benefits our local artists, designers, artisans, and cultural community as they get further connection to the world. And to end my talk, let us have a short quote from Martin O'Malley, a community united by the ideals of compassion and creativity has incredible power. Art of all kinds, music, literature, traditional art, visual arts can lift a community. I hope you enjoyed our talk about the Mindanao landscape. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Tonyedo, for providing further information about all the activities uh, being done in Mindanao with regard to developing a vibrant art scene. And uh, I think the, the word creative economy has been used uh, a number of times by our speakers. And perhaps later we can go into a, a little discussion on the efforts of uh, the Philippines as a whole uh, in developing our creative economy. Our fourth presenter, is a local visual artist from Davao. She is a self-taught artist who began her journey in 2014 with only a black pen. She originally drew simple black and white patterns and eventually began diversifying and incorporating vivid colors and texture into her art using acrylics and ink, which have now begun as an integral element of her artistic expression. Her art and style are deeply inspired by her personal experience and exposure to foreign art and cultures. She developed her own signature style, which can be aptly described as avant-garde with respect to conventional styles of painting. Her distinctive selection of modern abstract elements coupled with a vibrant and subdued colors with intricate patterns culminates, culminates in unique creations that blends in with contemporary design or provides a touch of modern accents in traditional settings. Please welcome Ms. Tanya Gaisano Lee to discuss the local art market in Mindanao. Good afternoon. My name is Tanya Gaisano Lee. I've started my art journey quite late in life. It wasn't planned and I had no great ambitions. But once it happened, I reluctantly embraced it, and I realized that as an artist from Mindanao, the challenge was different. I started with black ink on paper, 
abstracts and patterns. After a year, I slowly transitioned into using acrylic colors. It eventually evolved into the distinct style I have today, layers of colors, texture, and patterns. The art market here in Davao is very small and limited. Being based in Mindanao, we have to work harder, work smarter, and create our own opportunities. I started by selling my art online, and at first only friends bought from me. I tried not to take myself too seriously so that I wouldn't feel bad. I consider myself lucky because I had social media. A platform is still a platform regardless of how small. Even art materials were not readily available. I had to purchase them from Manila and ship them here. Each step was a struggle and nothing was convenient. There was no single cohesive organization that allowed artists to further develop their craft and showcase their talents. It was a slow climb, barely any progress was made, but of course I decided to power through. Despite being from Davao, my first solo exhibit was held in Manila at Crucible Gallery. The series was on erotic art. Coming from a traditional Chinese family, this was beyond my comfort zone. But despite that, it was received well, and this made me realize that the disparity of the Davao art market compared to Manila is huge. We are definitely lagging behind. My first Davao solo exhibit wasn't even at a gallery. It was held at the Marco Polo Hotel. I chose to do a mother and child series to open Mother's Day, but this wasn't born out of joy. It began with our three year struggle to conceive. The amount of frustration and challenges we face put a strain on our marriage. My coping mechanism was pouring everything onto the canvas. There is no concrete presence of a significant established gallery that is recognized in Davao. We have a handful of smaller galleries, but these do not have the name recall with the general public. There isn't much awareness of the arts. It isn't given enough importance, but the potential is there. Mindanao is filled with such a rich culture of the arts. From the tribes and their traditions, I found further inspiration for my ink patterns. From the weavers and their intricate designs of their cloth. These fabrics have gained such a raging following in Luzon. I was able to inculcate their actual inable cloth into my own art piece. I feel it adds a richness and a deeper meaning to each piece. I think culturally as well, Davoenos are very price conscious. The spending power is there, but the willingness is lacking. It is a constant uphill battle. The struggle is real, and I say this knowing full well that my own struggles are minute compared to other artists. Finally, an opportunity came. Kublai with Mindanao Art created this opportunity for all Mindanaoan artists to showcase their works. All artists from all walks of life, it spans beyond the borders of Davao, giving us all a sense of identity. Through his leadership, we are able to unite. It has become a platform with a broader reach, the great equalizer for artists that do not have the means or connections to further themselves and their craft. Mindanao art gives us a sense of unity within our art community. It has the potential to fully bridge the gap between artists and their audience. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Ms. Tanya Gaisano Lee, for giving us the perspective of uh, an independent visual artist uh, struggling to find her place um, within the milieu of uh, Mindanao. And of course, uh, we are quite encouraged by your story. And I am sure that, again, moving forward, uh, efforts uh, of spreading information such as this not only within the Philippines, but even globally, will bring more people uh, to the shores or to the galleries and other uh, venues for not only 
uh, Mindanao art, but for all the art, uh, as Ms. Estromera was saying earlier. Now for our fifth and final speaker to discuss uh, Mindanao art and Balai Kalipai. Uh, the final speaker is the visual artist and the co-founder of Balai Kalipai Museum and Art Gallery. He is a Datu Bago awardee, the highest award given by the city government of Davao to a constituent who has contributed to its growth and development. A distinguished alumnus awardee for culture uh, and the arts for sculpture, awarded by the University of the Philippines Alumni Association as well. He was also awarded by the Ateneo de Zamboanga, uh, the father Eduardo P. Ontiveros SJ recognition for culture and arts. He is better known as a monument maker in Mindanao, having created numerous monumental landmarks in more than 30 municipalities and cities depicting the lives, culture, and resources of the locality. His most photographed creations are the Agong House, a four hectare sculpture ground in Davao del Sur, and the larger than life sculptures of children in Davao City's People's Park. Aside from being a sculptor, he is also an art photographer, painter, and digital artist. Everyone, let us now all listen to Mr. Kublai Milian. I believe you are on mute. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, good day, everyone. Uh, I am Ray Mujahid Kublai Milian. Uh, I am commonly known as Kublai here in Mindanao. I'm uh, known as a monument maker, but I am here uh, because I wanted to share to you my recent uh, home, which is Balai Kalipay. What I wanted to narrate today is the long journey make that I will make it short in just for a few minutes, uh, where and how I got to today. So we'll start with my story in Ponce Suites. So, I started my journey when I went home from Manila. Um, I came home to the vow to build to, uh, our hotel, Ponce Suites. So in Ponce Suites, there are, I've, I've filled the whole place with sculptures in the facade and, and inside the hotel, there are hundreds or probably thousands of paintings. This is where um, I started and all the artworks here were very personal. Um, they, I painted them for myself. So I was not yet a community worker and a culture bearer. So my journey as an artist started with me being selfish and me being focused on me. So as I filled the whole hotel with sculptures and paintings, I started there must be more to this. There must be more to art than, than just um, working on, on art that's coming from my own thoughts. So I built uh, my next house, which is somewhere up in the mountains. I call it Buddha in Buddha. Here, if you see the sculpture, it's a 70 feet sculpture up in the mountains. Um, I wanted to meditate and, and reflect more on my life journey and my art. So I created um, a monument of a man sitting down and in a meditation form. There you go. Um, it gave birth to, to something else, you know, which led me to creating something that is beyond myself. So this journey, after creating this um, house up in, in Buddha, I moved 
to my next house. My next house was the Agong House and the Land of Peace. So in this Agong House, I stayed here for a while, probably six to eight years during my, my period of uh, being a hermit. Here I filled hectares and hectares of, of land with, um, with sculptures. So in front of the, the house, you could see the land of peace that I sculpted and along with so many uh, messages of peace. So here I wanted to, if you look at the symbol of the Agong house, there is the beater, but, but that beater is meant for, for the viewers or the, the visitors to feel, to, to become the beater themselves, to live in a house that reverberates the, the soul of the land. Also in this house, in this place, you, you would, I, I sculpted seven of the most beautiful words for me. But, but I expressed all this again because I wanted to go beyond myself. I wanted to reach out. I wanted up here in the mountains, I was only talking to the clouds. I wanted to put my messages up in the clouds so the clouds would go down to the, to the lowlands and, and people could read the messages in the clouds. So as, as in, my, in my long journey, I thought I really wanted to Im immerse myself more. So, and these uh, um, art havens that I did have become um, meeting points for my fellow artists. And here, I, I believe that when we get to live in a house like this, we get to think and feel more for others and for our environment. So another house that I did up here is the guitar house. It's called the Kuglong house. So right now, um, we, are, we are building more houses to accommodate more friends and more collaborators and more creative people. So, so we wanted them to, to explore more of, of our beautiful environment by living in a place that speaks of, of the environment and culture itself. So my next house after this <coughs> is where I currently live now. It's called Balay Kalinao. So this is part in, in presenting Balay Kalipay. This is the first house before Balay Kalipay. In this Balay Kalinao, this is where my family lives. I, 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 I grow my family here and we are happy. And right now this is a growing, it's a really huge house with several meters of, of floor spaces and gallery spaces. I cannot reveal them all to you because it is still a work in progress. But here it, I am almost done and I have expressed here um, many, many of my, my, my ideas for about, about Mindanao. There you go. I also here in this uh, Balay Kalinao houses, many of my collections from my artist friends, from Mindanao artists and from other friends. I curated them in a way that when you, you visit this house, you would surely open your mind and be able to, to know that there's a whole community out there that, that we can serve and share. So more of the, the here another photo of, of uh, Balay Kalipa, Balay Kalinao. So after this Balay Kalinao, which is now my home and my home of my family, I thought of creating Balay Kalipay, which is what we're presenting today. Here in Balay Kalipay, um, this is really meant uh, to, for, for us to share our deep thoughts by, by creating a residency program. So here in Balay Kalipay, that's why I've created three heads there. It's not just Kalipay in, Bis in the Vern in Bisaya it means joy, but joy here is meant means a, a deep kind of joy wherein you need to see deeply into the eyes and and the heart of your neighbor to know uh, to to be truly happy by by eventually all of us to become one. So there are there's so many things that we, we wanted to build here in Balay Kalipay. 
we are currently, I am working on a museum, a huge museum to house uh, the long story of, of Mindanao. But that's, again, a lot of work that um, that's still to be done. So after this Balay Kalipay, the, the last of the trilogy that I, that I uh, in, in my journey is the, the, the last would be Balay Gugma. So before my old age, I was thinking maybe we could build this Balay Gugma and become home for our teachers and students and those that we mentor. And hopefully here we could really um, teach our, our students to become, uh, to have a deep connection with earth. So right now this is a work in progress and hopefully um, if given more time and and health, uh, we would I would be able to finish this so I could share this to all Mindanaoan artists. Thank you and good, good evening. Thank you, uh, Mr. Kublai Milian. Uh, really uh, inspiring story. Uh, not only you, are you a visionary artist, but you are, seem to be a property developer because you have so many houses that uh, uh, you have opened up to uh, the various uh, stakeholders in the arts community in your area. And, and we really are excited to learn more and perhaps even visit one day all these different um, uh, properties that you have just uh, shared with us. So uh, we now come to the part of the uh, session where our viewers uh, will be able to share uh, their questions uh, in order to get a better understanding of what was just presented over the past hour. And uh, we know that many of the people in the audience sent uh, questions in, and we will have a round of questions for um, our speakers, our five speakers. And after that, we will then uh, have that uh, uh, introduction to the virtual tour of uh, um, Balai Kalipay. So if we may begin, uh, I guess in order of presentation, uh, we have one question for Ms. Stella Estramera. Uh, during your presentation, you mentioned uh, the need to be rooted in the Mindanao identity. Are you therefore uh, saying that Mindanao artists uh, should only focus on indigenous subjects and just paint, sculpt, or design ethnic themes? Thank you for that question. No, definitely not. Finding your roots and being rooted to one's identity means being knowledgeable about Mindanao, its narratives, its people and cultures, and then grow from there. When an artist is confident of his identity, he can explore more, break boundaries, and tell stories from a vast pool of inspirations. Like it's it's uh, it's Mindanaoans telling you that hey, we have Agyo, but you do not know him. He's more powerful than Lam Ang and Superman. It's like that. If you're familiar with that, then then your imagination can can be freed, and you will know the. The, the the unlimited source of inspiration that Mindanao has. Thank you. Thank you uh, for the uh, concise answer. And, and certainly we agree with um, your perspective that, uh, you know, uh, developing your understanding of your own culture first um, and expanding that to, you know, the, the national culture is a truly uh, wise way to develop the art. Uh, we have a question for Mr. Jeff Bangwat uh, from Link Mimi. Is it possible to visit the Field Museum? And could you tell us a little more about the mentoring program you mentioned? Is uh, Jeff uh, online? 
I guess if not, we can, uh, in the meantime, move to the next question. And uh, we have a question from Rona Avis for Mr. Dexter Taniedo. Uh, how can Mindanao art galleries and museums be promoted uh, to foreign countries, which uh, will in turn entice more uh, foreigners to visit the province and learn more about the region's culture? Perhaps we should check if uh, uh, we are allowing our speakers. Okay, here we go. I heard someone. Okay. Thank you, Thank you again for that question, sir. Um, the virtual platform is a great starting point in promoting art galleries and museums here in Mindanao, especially now during the pandemic. But an active participation in big events outside Mindanao can also help. But to entice people to come is not just separating an art event but promote an experience for the entirety of the place, meaning it's a collective effort of the entire community. So to promote our gallery and museum to the world is to show what they can see, feel, eat, and experience to the very place they are going to visit. That's why it's the creative economy must work so that we can really promote things in a very whole manner. Thank you, Mr. Taniedo. And in fact, uh, uh, this, this uh, new normal that we are living in uh, has really forced everyone to explore different uh, uh, ways by which culture can be shared. And, and in fact, that in the DFA, we have uh, uh, followed your advice to try and make um, our cultural uh, activities immersive and, uh, and uh, encompassing in terms of different aspects of, of uh, the arts and culture. And, and perhaps in the future, we can also do another um, uh, activity uh, for uh, the Mindanaoan uh, artists. We have a question for um, Ms. Gaisano Lee. Uh, and linking it to that uh, mention of the virtual uh, sharing, how do you fully utilize your social media platform to efficiently further your reach as an artist? Hi, good afternoon. Um, I use my, I first started using my social media platform. I used Facebook, but I feel like Facebook compared to Instagram, Facebook is more like a shotgun approach. So the you get to target a lot of people, but then I feel like Instagram is more efficient. The inquiries I find in Instagram always results in sales, but in Facebook, it's more of name recognition. So it depends what you're trying to target. Like if you're trying to target a broader audience, then you should go for Facebook. But then if you're actually trying to specifically target people who would buy your art, I feel like Instagram is more efficient, especially during the pandemic, since we can't go out and we can't go to galleries and exhibits as openly as we would pre-pandemic. I feel like social media has become such a strong platform for everybody. Thank you, Tanya. Um, I believe you do come from the generation that is really uh, more in tune with all these new social media platforms. And as you mentioned, uh, different platforms uh, cater to different audiences. So your insight as to using the visual uh, appeal of Instagram is, I think, a very good uh, piece of information that others can learn from. I understand that uh, Jeff Bangot is now back, so we can proceed uh, with that question about visiting the Field Museum and a little more information about um, the mentoring uh, program that you have. Hello, good afternoon. Yes. Hello. Okay, so the, uh, the museum, the, the galleries that we have are actually open uh, by appointment basis and 
uh, to compensate our lack of uh, audience, for example, we do have uh, Facebook and other social media accounts uh, showcasing our um, out, uh, the, out, the output of our students right there. So that's it. So the mentoring program is actually open to all. So if they want to be part of the program, all they need to do is to contact us. So they could basically message us through our accounts that are also in the social media. Thank you, uh, Jeff. And finally, a question for Mr. Kublai Milian. Uh, we've, we've seen, you've explained your vision um, of uh, developing art in, in uh, Mindanao. Um, but in particular, what, what is your inspiration in creating your gigantic sculptures? And what is this fascination with uh, this type of uh, creation? Um, especially, as you said, you began really uh, by producing art for yourself as a, a means of self-expression. And how has it grown to you know, inspire others? Okay, good. Thank you for that question. Uh, when, when I got back uh, here in Davao, in Mindanao, from man, my Manila stint, um, I started uh, putting up um, small exhibitions. Um, way back then, uh, when you put up shows, people would not even bother to look at your works. So, so I thought, maybe if um, uh, we, we make them bigger, maybe people would, would stop. So I created something that literally would, would stop people in their trucks, in their, in their cars. So I started building them in, in the middle of, of roads in, in rotondas. But that journey again is a very is is again um, a difficult story because um, this is a very sad story because uh, I I was supposed to have my show in the U.S. and then I it took me months and months of sleepless nights to create this uh, body of works for that show. But then it, when it was time for me to put my show, I was denied because uh, my real name is Ray Mujahid. So then I, of course, I was single. I had, they have a reason for, to deny me because I can create my art anywhere. But then I was young, I was frustrated, and I told myself, I will never do another artwork again unless it's bigger, heavier, taller than the heaviest, biggest, tallest living American. So that's where my, my, my art started to become big. And... I said, since I cannot go anywhere, so I might as well stay here in Mindanao and know my and know why I am here, and and so that journey did not stop for for more than two decades now. I've I've never stopped building monuments every day. Uh, we hop, I, me and my team, we hop from one municipality to another city to 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 even churches and hospitals to build these monuments. So maybe with all these big monuments, we could now inspire others to come out, all the other artists to come out and, and say to the world who we are, because I believe that Mindanao amongst the, the islands in, in, in the Philippines, we have a deeper connection to nature and the environment. So I think, and I believe that Mindanao has something to share to the rest of the world. Thank you. Thank you, Kublai. Uh, you, you made mention of your name, Mujahid, and also Kublai. So we're really quite thankful that uh, you have you know, taken the fight as a warrior to fight for the uh, visions of artists, not only in Mindanao, but even for the entire Philippines. And uh, you know, we in the Department of Foreign Affairs, uh, we have an office in, uh, called DFA Mindanao. And uh, you, know, you can reach out to um, the head of that office, uh, who is a colleague of ours, and uh, we can further the cooperation and collaboration between um, uh, your group uh, and others, uh, so that we are able to uh, spread, you know, all this, all this uh, good news uh, about uh, the development of art and culture 
um, in the Philippines as a whole as well. Um, and of course, maybe a final question for those of you who wish to answer. Uh, as I said, the creative arts industry has been mentioned uh, quite a number of times. And uh, as some of you may know, we have a creative arts industry bill currently pending in co Congress that is designed really to bring together all the different sectors of the creative industry in the Philippines uh, in a more cohesive and coordinated way. Uh, so as visual artists uh, representing Mindanao, how do you see yourselves uh, you know, working within this uh, framework of a creative arts industry for the Philippines so that uh, your visions for bringing your culture and developing the Filipino identity as a whole uh, can be uh, spread through this uh, hopefully uh, soon to be signed law. Uh, perhaps we can start uh, the other way around. Now, yes, Kublai, if you have your brief thoughts about this. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, when we wanted to share Mindanao to, to the country, um, it was kind of difficult if we present uh, one artist at a time. So the, 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 the vision here is to present the artists of Mindanao as one whole, to have a collective spirit, to, to, to have a collective, um, to, uh, to be united by us um, uh, in celebration of our practices, of our celebrations, of our bounty. So if, if collectively one day, by, by doing these exercises in, in the Mindanao Art Fair, um, we are now trying to put together um, this, this, um, all these ideas. And, and because we are in our third year, we are very close to getting there. And hopefully when we are fully ready, uh, for example, like, like today, we were able to share to you and, and the rest of your audience, um, who we are as a, as a, as an island and how we are so much part of this, um, uh, our, of our nation. So, that's why we, we work so hard because um, I think we are lagging behind from our fellow um, islands like um, in Luzon, especially and in the Visayas. That's why. But but our friends there are very happy to help us uh, to lift us up. That's why it is such a beautiful. This is such a beautiful process that our friends in Manila Art and friends in Viva Excon are, are helping us and guiding us in putting up the Mindanao Art. And the Mindanao Art Fair, I think, becomes a beautiful platform for us to collectively share who we are. Thank you. Thank you, Kublai. Uh, perhaps, uh, oh, I, I see that uh, Danny, Danny is still here. Uh, uh, perhaps you could also share your perspective about the creative arts uh, bill and how it, it is designed to bring everything together, if you're still Yes. Uh, I'm here, but I cannot open my video. I think, uh, <laughs> uh, hello. Uh, I think the, um, the, uh, uh, there you go. Yes, your picture is on screen. All right. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, regarding the creative industry, I, I'm very happy that our, we have the, um, we have the creative, we, the, we are now talking about the creative industry and how to protect our artists, the, the art and culture and the protection development and the improvement of our art and culture to the NCCA. And right now, um, there has been a lot of talk that is going on already for the protection, not only of the creative industry, but also the, the artist, the craftsman, the artisan. Uh, all of these are uh, being, uh, uh, being tackled now, you know, the, we have a lot of congressional hearing wherein uh, we are talking about how can we help them, how can we protect all these craftsmen, artisans, and artists in all discipline of arts, not only in visual arts, but also in, in, in literature, dance, and, uh, and uh, uh, music. So um, I, I'm glad, I'm glad that uh, 
people are talking now and, and I'm glad that uh, we have the full awareness of this because we always say that the art and culture is the, the very soul of our nation. So it, we cannot do without. So that being said, we really have to protect, we really have to improve, preserve and, and develop our art and culture in order for us to survive and to have uh, an identity because these are all essentials in um, nation building. Um, yeah, thank you. Th thank you, Danny. Uh, uh, you really encapsulated uh, the uh, desires of all of us here today uh, as we look forward to uh, really making culture an important part of the Filipino soul. I see that uh, Stella has raised her hand. Please, if you may, uh, briefly. Thank you very much. Um, with regards to that question about um, we have a long way to go for our creative art industry and stuff like that, we can say that we're on the right track. Maybe it's it's long, maybe it's short, but you'll never know with its with this um, pandemic and everything where every where life has just sped up. So maybe next year we're all set. For as long as we have the vision, it's very important today to have a vision so that once we're out of this home that we're we're locked in, then we know where we are leading to. So we're not stopping it. That, that's the point, that the creative industry has to keep on, even if we are behind doors, even if we are uh, locked in. And then so that when the world opens, we're out there ahead of everyone. Thank you, Stella. Truly, uh, we need visionaries like all of you to help guide us uh, towards a better uh, and more inclusive future. Uh, unfortunately, as you know, we've already gone over uh, an hour. Um, so we will now devote the last part of the program to this, uh, uh, well, the tour. And technology has truly been a gift for us, which has allowed us to reconnect to our heritage, even if virtually like we are here today. And now with the help of that same innovative uh, technology, we can once again immerse ourselves deeper in our culture and art through the Balai Kalipai 360 virtual tour. This virtual tour will form part of a library of virtual tours where we hope to bring you to the many art venues and heritage sites all over the country now accessible online. And also more important, documented and preserved for posterity and reference. This tour is currently viewable at uh, httpww dot manilaartfair.com or you may scan the QR code which we will be showing on screen uh, so that as I mentioned earlier you can visit the site and do the tour at your leisure you can spend two hours you know uh, going through the entire uh, museum and art gallery and what we will be showing here is just a brief uh, experience so if we may begin As you enter, you would see probably the longest table in Mindanao by Agi Pakatitunan. We designed it this way, long, so we could share our food and our table to other artists and other people who, where we could sh share our thoughts and experiences in art. Here in the main hall, you, you would see several huge murals but to really appreciate it, you have to step back to see the abstracted images of the tribe people. You would also see um, some spiritual symbols of the mandalas and the wings of the butterflies and the wings of the eagle. All of them combined. Um, I, I, I'm, I've hidden several messages or actually a lot of messages that I value. This durian canopy is my breakfast place. Here I'm like a ripened fruit. I feel like um, I'm ripe and ready to share my talent to the world. Here, 
is my recent work that I installed it in, in Balay Kalipay, that passion and compassion. In the word passion, you would see the image of the mind, but it's not enough. So I added the word compassion, which has the image of the heart. They're both combined. We can now fully share our art. In the dining area, you could see a mural where the main image is a waterfall. So there is a, it's a good symbol because when we eat, we wanted, we also wanted uh, everybody's table to be filled and flowing. The hallways, the staircases, the bathrooms, the rooms are all filled with my art collections. Here I curated them. Uh, if you, you could see notable artists alongside with uh, upcoming artists and those that I mentor. Uh, so, um, if I could have the video again, please. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, as I mentioned, that was a, a brief glimpse of what you yourselves can see uh, should you take that virtual tour. So, you just need to visit that site. Um, uh, uh, it's a Manila art site. And uh, once you enter, you can then take uh, a tour as long as you wish. And so on behalf of all the panelists today and uh, of all the uh, participants from around the world, this has been Assistant Secretary Eduardo Martin Menez on behalf of the Department of Foreign Affairs. We thank you for joining us and for allowing us to share with you a glimpse of Mindanao and the new home for the arts at Balay Kalipay. We look forward to see you in the Philippines when it is safe to travel. And uh, of course, that's all four corners of the Philippines, including Mindanao, Visayas, and Luzon. So once again, thank you for your participation. And we look forward to uh, your continued support for the cultural diplomacy program of the DFA and our stakeholders. Thank you very much. We're off the air. Thank you very much, Asek. Yes, thank you. Thank you to everyone. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. It was really a, a good learning experience for, for me in particular. I've only been to Dava once in my life. <laughs> also, you miss a lot. You miss. Yes, I know. I know. Your, yeah. <laughs> and that's just Dava. Yes. So, oh, uh, true. Just lost your whole life. There's more. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I, you know, I really hope that uh, because of the participation of our foreign service posts, you know, we'll have more interest. And I am really very, very impressed by the, 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 the quality of the artwork that is done by by everything that you showed. I, I'd like you to be my guest in um, in Manila Art uh, ASEC. <laughs> 